Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder to my extended naval aiming guide. This video comes in five parts and part one is the intro in which I will talk about what I'm talking about and also what I'm limiting myself to. Point number two are the settings which are highly important. Part three is the theory to understand why we do the things that we do and then part four is the practice is how it looks like doing the things that we do to detonate uh, enemies, ammo racks, etc. Last but not least, part 5 is the ammo choice, aka how to kill an enemy ship, target prioritization. So let's start with the intro. Navo Forces is the youngest vehicle branch in War Thunder and the one with the most potential left for introducing mechanics and vessels. It is also immensely profitable at the very moment of making this video, silver line wise, if you know how to play certain ships in combination with boosters, wages and orders. My videos about earning over 1 million silver lines in a 15 to 20 minute long game should be known, if not for the YouTube algorithm. But a fundamental flaw of War Thunder Naval Forces is the aiming system. What good is it? when you have the best civil line income potential if you cannot hit and kill what you are aiming at and get killed in return because of this. And I am not talking about the dispersion of the guns or the salvos. Since the system by Gaijin is not really intuitive and not really well explained, I will try with this video to talk you through it step by step. I am focusing in this aiming guide on realistic battles since this is what I have the most experience with. And also what is, ironically enough, with the system Gaijin has designed, easier than AB. Alternatively, you can switch in AB to the shooting mechanics of realistic battles and the settings as well. In this video, I'm just focusing on the ship vs ship combat with guns. So that does not include torpedoes, depth charges, rockets, missiles, etc. and also not shooting at aircraft. So now let's come to the settings. There is basically two blocks and the first one is the options and we go under naval battle settings and there you can see uh, for themselves they are very important. The most important are that you have to um, the arcade one is the highlight projectiles fall point. It gives in the last few seconds of the shells falling onto the water surface them a bright green tracer and also a point of impact so you can learn how it really works. This is how you can really uh, distinguish your shells from anybody else's shells if multiple of your team shoot at one at the same target. That is very helpful but it's not for a realistic battle. Then we also have um, the opportunity to disable the buzzer sound, which is a bit buggy and therefore mostly annoying. Then very important is also that you disable the automatic target lock. Then I would go for the realistic aiming. And which is also really important is the follow bullet camera. We will see later on why this is really helpful under certain circumstances. Then we come to the actual controls and then we have, which you can search here, the mouse wheel and I would highly suggest that you give it the distance correction option and not anybody of the, of the others. And for me best works also the mouse wheel multiplier in NAMO of 35%, although if you have a different preference go for that. Then we have the ranging. First of all, the ranging shot. Uh, I have set this to the right mouse button. And I also preferably go for the turret ranging shot so that not a single gun of a twin or triple turret shoots but the entire turret. And that helps you a bit better in seeing where the shots actually go because there is always the possibility of a freak shot that has up to 10 degrees of deviation from the actual point of aim. So then the next one is the toggle the gunners 
targets and that is I think by default set to E. So you can switch between if your gunners shouldn't shoot at all, if they should shoot at everything, if they only should shoot at floating things like boats and ships or only aircraft. Then we have one of the most important setting and that is the halt and I have set it to P. If you press it, your ship, if it goes forwards, uh, basically tries to throw the anchor. So the engines go in full reverse up until you get really slow and then they try to bring you to a halt. And that helps you immensely if you're in a cap, if you are in perfect cover or if you try to hide from something. Uh, it's really good for fine tuning and so you can concentrate on aiming the torpedoes or um, setting up the guns for an ambush instead of fiddling around with the speed. Very helpful indeed. Then um, this is something that is up for discussion. The main and auxiliary caliber shooting with one button. I have set it to yes because when I'm in a battleship, battle cruiser or even a heavy or a light cruiser, it's really helpful to uh, bridge the gap between the main battery reloads with the secondaries. And then there are some destroyers where this is also set to their 37 millimeters, for example. And that is a bit annoying. One German premium, the newer one, is affected by this. And I think also one French destroyer, the premium uh, destroyer. And for them, if you play nothing but them, I would disable this option. So then we also have the select the first, second, third and seems to be new fourth type of shell and that allows you to switch the ammunition and on the Zehner uh, Tastatur in German or the num block I have set it a bit differently so you can switch between uh, if you only exclusively go with the primaries, the secondaries or the tertiary aka the anti-aircraft weapons and so if you see an aircraft coming towards you it's too close for the secondaries you can try to switch to your um, auto cannons and then gun it down before it drops the top bomb whatever and then switch back and as you can see i've also set short buttons on the mouse um, to switch between the primary and the secondaries so that then brings us to the manual targeting of the primary caliber, the auxiliary caliber and the anti-aircraft caliber. And as you can see, it's also on the number block and uh, it's basically the row above. So if, for example, there are two aircraft coming in and you want your gunners for whatever reason to focus on the one because it's coming for you and the other one isn't but they're shooting on the other one then you can manually override their target selection and let them fire on them and that target selection is active as long as this uh, target is still alive so you also can press the respective button again and disable the selection if it has unsuccessfully hopefully dropped the torpedo or bomb, the aircraft that is, and is now returning and there is another one coming in. You don't want your gunners to shoot at the aircraft that has no payload anymore. Then um, when we go now to ground vehicles, and this is a personal favorite of mine, there is at the very bottom the crosshair lighting and I have set it to L. It's not just good for tanks if you are in thermal imaging, but also, in my opinion, for ships, I like my crosshair red. And then also, which is very important, if you go to common, then you go to the lock target. And it's very important that none of, none of them is uh, set to the same button. And you only have it here, either with X or with the middle mouse button. So basically pressing the uh, mouse wheel. And this enables you to actually lock on to the enemy ship and therefore enable the um, automatic system to start working. So those are the settings. Now let's talk about the theory. 
so for theory we funnily enough look at first at tanks and here you can see the 2s38 with the irst system locking on to an enemy plane and it automatically follows the lock on so this is not me trying to do anything and then um, i just shoot at the circle that's the lead indicator and the shell lands and destroys the aircraft or uh, you do it a bit more directly here, you directly aim at it, you get a few hits, and then the aircraft is destroyed. The same is if the aircraft is significantly faster, still, if you're standing still, it's perfectly fine to just directly aim at the lead indicator. If you're driving uh, anti-parallel though, so if the target goes into the other direction, you have to lead the lead indicator according to your speed in order to get hits and then destroy the target. So let's now have a look at how this works with ships. And uh, we can see that we have here the USS Wilkinson because it has just a very quick update system. And um, as we can see, we have here the black chevron uh, pointing upwards, then a green uh, shell fall indicator or aiming reticle. And um, yeah, only when we then lock on to the target, we can see that there is a gray box appearing around and this white area is the torpedo lead indicator um, sadly that i can't disable this and then also an updating range appears and you can see this is very fast due to this being a very modern destroyer so if we then aim for the water line we can see that uh, if we just fiddle a little bit around with the mouse wheel we can let the green aiming reticle actually move up and down on the silhouette of the ship um, because it goes a bit further and then it projects itself onto the ship in theory you therefore can with very accurate guns aim for certain parts such as the bridge turrets or torpedo launchers and with armor piercing also with internal parts such as ammo storages so that is all fine and good but now the target is actually standing still and we are standing still any aiming system in the world works like that right so what happens when we are in actual battle and we just start moving and uh, watch the upper green echelon as it then moves to the right continuously with every update it actually tries to compensate for the lead because our shells take the momentum our ship has with them so if i fire them right um, to the broadside so 90 degrees off the shells will actually get there but also still have a little bit of a momentum the ship had with it so meaning that when we now fire you can see that the shells don't go to the middle of the ship where we aim but they're landing off the bow and there is a little bit of a difference between the main battery shells and the secondaries because in this case the secondaries have a higher mass velocity if we then overlap the two echelons again we perfectly hit with the main battery shells the middle of the ship meaning it is calculating for the main battery shells and this is basically it you obviously have to keep the distance um, but therefore we have to talk about then um, another thing and that is the turn and as you can see the aiming reticle so the green uh, point uh, or circle and the lower echelon are not overlapping perfectly anymore and the game therefore tries to tell you that something is wrong with you either you are in a sharp turn or you're listing because you're flooding or you get rammed or something else uh, like for example enormous battleship shells landing right next to your light destroyer and almost flip you over and the system tries to give you a hint that you should compensate for this but firing in a turn is notoriously difficult and requires experience if we now aim with the armor piercing for the rear ammo rack, we can observe that we have a little bit of dispersion with the shells of the main battery. So we just always miss exactly the rear ammo rack, which I am aiming for. As you can see in the top uh, right corner, there is the hit camera. And this is the theory. So how about the practice? 
So for essentially the last chapter, I decided to combine the practice part, so how I shoot and what I do, together with the ammo choice, because there is enough to talk. The first part is me shooting with the Scharnhorst at helpless cruisers and doing this at 10, 12 kilometers, and then also a broadside Alaska. And then later on, I will do it with the Frank Knox, a US destroyer, so you can see the difference between battleship and destroyer gameplay. The main difference between patrol boats and destroyers, cruisers, battleships is that they don't have this updating range bar and therefore also not the red top chevron. So basically what I do is I decide to, de to determine the exact distance and because I'm going not precisely parallel to the target, I shoot a bit short to hit the waterline because the distance changes from the point where I pull the trigger to the shells actually arriving. Now, do this a couple of times in the custom battles and you know exactly what I mean. So, you precisely determine the range as you just could see me with the aiming reticle, the green thing, going over the silhouette of the enemy ship. Then I reduced it to the waterline and then went, in this case, roughly 200 meters short. It doesn't really matter what the game says, what the game tells you what the distance is, but what you make it of the green aiming reticle. That's the whole trick. And also you can see I use the, aim, the chevron to determine where the middle of the ship compared to the ammo rack is and aim accordingly. And also this shot was majestic right there because I was in a full turn. It's highly, highly difficult, and if you rewind a little bit, you could see the difference, and mm, so good, so sweet, so great. And also, taking down Helenas from the front like this, doing tremendous amounts of damage when they're angled in, AP is just the deal. So, funnily enough, that was the result. Um, I got the survivor, but I got no result, and then when we actually looked into it, it looked like this. I got a bit more than nothing. And uh, now let's have a look at destroyer gameplay, and when we shoot at the smallest of the small, the patrol boats, in this case, Emerge German Reserve patrol boat. Second cell was out, and we hit him while we were also a little bit in a turn. And I also shoot later on versus destroyers. So the question is, how do you shoot at targets? How do you kill them? Well, it obviously depends on what ship you have and what ship you are shooting. But the TLDR is that there is the obvious one when you are fighting a cruiser with a cruiser, you use AP. When you're fighting a battleship with a battleship, you're using AP. But even when using a destroyer, you're using AP or SAP to get into the interior to detonate the ammo rack to hit the machinery and ag does work on the superstructure ag is great if you have an ambush you hit the bridge he cannot steer he cannot control his vessel and then you also take out the lightly protected guns but most of the time when the enemy is shooting at somebody else you're working him over if you cannot hit an ammo rack reliable, reliable, you're using the AP to aim for the machinery to not just slow the enemy down, but to also do a lot of damage to the crew. Apparently, all the engineers are inside of the boilers, according to Gaijin's damage model. That's how it is. And this is how I work here. That's the French premium cruiser. And you can see I'm working him over. The main result is to get him below 8% and then eventually he will sink, but I want the kill, so I keep shooting. Um, my auto gunners warn me that there is a patrol boat. I switch to HE, but because I reverse and turn, I then hear overlead. He turns, that throws over my, the aiming calculation that I had in my head, and um, so it took a bit longer to actually get him down. So to know how fast you're going, how you turn in relation to the enemy is important. 
And that sounds complicated, but you can eliminate a lot of factors when you're stationary. You can also eliminate a lot factor, uh, even more, also a lot of factors, not even more. You can eliminate also a lot of factors if you're going parallel to the enemy ship, because then the lead compared to the actual point of aim is relatively small. If you're going anti-parallel, so you're going from left to right and the enemy ship is going from right to left, then you have ta to take an extraordinary amount of lead. And um, even if you're a destroyer with rapid firing guns or a sh battleship like the Sharnos that has a comparatively fast reload of roughly 17 seconds, those are wasted salvos that cost you ammunition. That costs you also a potential crippling salvo and gives the enemy the chance to notice he's getting shot and return fire so you take quote unquote unnecessary damage. So that is the TLDR. Again, if you have not really perfect, perfectly understood every single little bit just try it out for yourself a little bit in the custom battle or in the test drive try to go through the settings once more try to practice a little bit with them because naval forces can be great if you master just the aiming system i know it would be easier to copy the aiming system of other games but that is not what gaijin does because it would take out the realistic part from realistic battle, at least in Gaijin's terms. I still think that the system is not perfect, but you still can make it work. Again, the most important tip is to go on an almost parallel course, precisely determine the distance and then shoot a bit short depending on how fast the relative speed is, how large the distance is, and also what shells you're firing, how, what muscle velocity and muscle velocity of retention they have. And then you can get results like this with a little bit of a booster and um, the highest civil line modifier in the game together with a premium account. You can get the massive amount of 340,000 civil lines with just a, what was it, 200% booster. And that's it for me today, so thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more, let me know in the comment section if you want even more guides, if you uh, need further explanation, if this was helpful or not, let me know in the comment section down below, and as usual, we will see each other on the battlefields, in the skies, and on the waves of War Thunder.